This trigger is called the AKT. Very simple. And here it is installed. And what we try to do with this trigger is make a affordable yet performance trigger that suits the function of the AK-47, which is more of a carbine rather than a long range type weapon. This is a speed trigger. It is not an ultra precise two stage trigger such as the Geisley National Match high speed trigger. This is designed for close to mid range shooting where you need to get rounds downrange on target accurately. When you feel this AKT trigger, it will feel to you as a single stage. It's a beautifully light trigger, okay? It comes in here, you see this one, it's slightly under three and a half pounds. We've seen a lot of them come in at about two and a half, and there's a little bit of uh, adjustment here on the mainspring in order to bring it up, but it is not a heavy trigger. It is gonna be a beautiful speed shooting three and a half pound trigger for your AK-47. We're gonna to move to installing one of these guys, um, but first we're gonna do the safety fitting here, and I'm gonna show this to you in this right here. And this is a small fixture that we made so that we could see the action of the trigger. And I'm gonna show you how to fit one of these guys up. When you're working with a safety on a firearm, you have to be absolutely sure that what you do is gonna work and there's absolutely no known way to the best of an engineer's ability that the safety is ever going to fail. That's, that's what you can't have. You can't have that. So we had to come up with a way to adjust the safety ledge, but yet be totally secure. And the way we did that is if you look at this AKT right here, you will notice this little boss back here with a hole in it. The top of this boss is sized for these first several guns, so it needs no fitting, okay? For the Arsenal Bulgaria milled receiver, the Arsenal stamped receiver, no DAC spud stamped receiver on an NDS type, NDS-2. So for a lot of guns, you're not gonna have to do anything. This is a fully drop-in trigger. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna install this, and I'm gonna show you as best as I can how this works. When you go to do this on your gun, the first thing you do is you will install, just like here, the bare trigger with no disconnector on this. You, you put it in here and we have these alignment pins instead of regular pins right here. And you fit your trigger in. First thing you look for on your gun is you look to make sure that this trigger rotates freely. The holes in an AK-47 receiver are stamped or they're laser cut out and there can be some inaccuracies there. You wanna make sure that your trigger fits down in the slot, and as you can see, it slides back and forth. This is how an AK-47 trigger works. It doesn't have the side trunnions like an AR-15 trigger. The slot in the receiver is what stops the trigger from moving back and forth, and you want this to rock totally free. Okay, if there's any rubbing, you may have to receive, relieve the edges of your receiver. Also, look at the rivet in the back here. Okay, there's a rivet there for the trigger guard. Some of these rivets are oversized, and what you can find is the trigger will actually rub on that rivet. So make sure it floats totally free. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your safety. You're gonna install it. Bring this down to the safe position, okay? Now forgive me while I take my glasses off here because I can't see up close anymore. And if you look right here, look and see how that safety just clears that trigger. There is now no movement of this trigger when the safety ledge is on top of it. Okay, Bill, what did this safety come out of? That was a Sentry Arms. This came out of a Sentry Arms. No fitting required for this trigger. You put this in, your trigger in, the AK-47 trigger stops on the back, bottom part of the, of, the, of, the, of the receiver. That's what it stops on. So you push your trigger back, you basically push it forward, okay? And this is where you check your trigger fitting. And as you can see right here, okay, it comes right up against that. We allow for about 10 thousandths of an inch. 10 thousandths of an inch is 
six thousandths of an inch are two thicknesses of regular notebook notebook paper like you find in um, a school notebook okay not thick card stock uh, we allow for ten thousandths of an inch of clearance here and the instructions show that right here it shows the dimension that you have so it doesn't have to fit exactly there can be a slight amount of play but to measure that ten thousandths you can use a fewer gauge if you have automotive or motorcycle tools or take two sheets of thin notebook paper put them together and they should just barely fit through that gap all right now let's look at another safety this safety here is from a Yugoslavian type weapon okay look at all that clearance that's in there okay we have to make that up all right so this is this is the method we came up with that is as foolproof as you can get you take your trigger out and we supply two roll pins with every trigger okay these are alloy steel roll pins and we supply two in case you mess the first one up and you can go back and redo this. You're not going to be sanding or filing on the trigger. You can't screw the trigger up. You're only going to be filing on this roll pin. So what you do is you take a, take a block, in this case, a small piece of wood. Take a hammer. And you knock the roll pin fully down into the trigger and you can see how much that's sticking up not much at all okay so the roll pin goes way far don't try to tap this roll pin in and leave it up high you don't want that the roll pin has to stop at the bottom of the hole and goes your trigger Goes your safety. Here I am trying to put it in the same side of the receiver as an AR-15. And if you look at this here, all right, there's no movement, but you can barely get this to go down. This will not go down, all right. So very, very little needs to come off of this roll pin. Now, if it's stuck up a lot, you could use some type of a a marking compound such as um, whiteout, okay, where you mark your safety and you bring it up to the roll pin and you see how the whiteout has been removed as you move the parts around a little bit. In this case, I can just see we just need to take a real little bit off. So the tool of choice right here is a six inch file and you want to get the right one, okay. Files come in different grades, all right, different grades by I mean different coarseness of the file. What, what we want here is a flat file, all right? Doesn't matter that it has, it has cutting edges on the sides, but you want a flat file and you want this to be what's known as a smooth file. In this case, this says mill smooth, all right? If you have a, have a file that's too coarse, you're gonna have trouble taking material off the top of this roll pin. You don't want what's called a second cut, which basically means medium coarseness to a file and you don't want a bastard file, which is coarse cut, mill smooth. And in the instructions, we actually list a file that you can purchase from McMaster Car, part number 4225A32. That's this guy right here. McMaster Car is a great resource for industrial parts, tools, things like that. Everything that they make or they distribute is either made in America or it seems like it's made in Germany. There's nothing that comes from offshore. It is not cheap tools, okay? It's not necessarily the cheapest place to order from, but the website is absolutely easy to maneuver around. And for things like this, you can order this file for eight bucks. It's a great tool to have. We put this on our block, and I'm gonna take this file right here, and I'm gonna mill just a, just a little bit off of this guy. And as you notice, I'm going one direction. I'm not going like this. 
going backwards over a file, you'll dull this. It's a cutting tool. Make sure you use enough pressure that you're physically cutting on the file. And when I hold it, just notice how I hold this guy. The tang of the file is in the palm of my hand. It's gripped with my fingers and I use one finger to control it as I put pressure on it. Down and across it. The roll pin is not soft. It's hardened, but it's not hardened to the point where the file won't cut it. Roll pin's probably about 45 Rockwell. The spring range, which roll pin is, when it comes to hardness, is, is about 40, 45 to 50 Rockwell. You get above 50, it no longer starts acting like a spring and you can have all kinds of problems with springs cracking and failing in service. Once you get below 45 Rockwell, a spring will easily and start to take a set. So a spring, such as an automotive spring or a leaf spring or a coil spring, uh, not necessarily coil springs that are in your, in your gun, but when it's heat treated, that's the range you shoot for, 45 to 50. Okay. Just that little bit, there's no movement to this guy. And you're able to pop this thing over it real easy. I'd probably take just a little bit more off of this. Just make sure it's a little bit flat. I could see that this is kind of catching as it comes up over this. All right. So we'll take just a little bit more off of this guy. And we'll be good to go. And there's two roll pins included. So if something happens and you go too far, it's no big deal. There's a hole underneath this that you can get a punch in. You punch out your roll pin and you start over again. Easy as can be. You don't touch your trigger, you won't ruin your trigger. And just make an attempt. Keep the roll pin flat. Don't cock your file when you do it. Take your time. I might make it look easy. I deal with these pins and precision fitting and things like that all the time. Files are one of the machinist's main tools. You may have a trade or a profession where you don't do stuff like this. The key to having success when you work with these small things is take your time and don't get frustrated, okay? When you're fitting these things in, just understand that it's supposed to fit and you never have to use a hammer to pound anything or anything like that. If that happens, there's a problem, take it out, look at your trigger or your hammer outside of the gun. There we go, beautiful. There's no movement of this guy, and this moves back and forth. Easy peasy. All right. Could probably even take a little bit more off of that guy, but that's, that's the whole way that you fit these guys. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna install this in an AK-47. And at this time, I wanna introduce, Bill, if you wanna come over here, this is Bill Quigley, and Bill Quigley is the lead designer of the AKT. Uh, last year in 2014, before SHOT Show in the middle of December, um, we were thinking about the things that we were going to bring to SHOT, and we needed one other thing for, for ALG. We were finally releasing the six second mount here for the uh, Glock 22 and 17 pistol. This mount fits on the Glock pistol, and you can put a name point T1 or T2 on it. And ALG is very well known for products like this rail right here, ALG EMR V1, M lock rail, 10 inches long, free floating, beautifully machined 7075 T6 barrel nut, comes with the wrench that you can put this guy on with, which I think I lost the, here we go comes with a wrench that automatically torques and indexes the rail. So we were releasing more rails, releasing V2, other things, but we needed something else. So in the middle of December, we decided to make an AK-47 trigger. We do not deal with AK-47s, M4 carbines, AR-15. In about two weeks, Bill and I designed the AKT. In the early part of January, we had working prototypes. We test fired them here in our bullet trap. I had never fired an AK-47 in my life before until I fired it in a bullet trap here at the shop. And we went to the SHOT Show and went to Industry Day at the range um, 
That was the first time I ever fired an AK-47 at a target. So Bill here is the lead designer of this, and what we're going to do is we're going to walk through how to install an AKT in an AK-47. Okay, we're going to install an AKT in this AK-47 right here made by Armory USA in Houston, Texas. Um, in the previous part of this video, I have to ask your forgiveness. I was looking at the wrong camera. So if you see me looking down here like this and not looking at the camera, that's why. So hopefully I'm looking at the right one right here. Um, before we start, first thing I want to talk about is firearm safety when you're doing this stuff. Um, make sure every one of your guns is unloaded before you start. You'll notice that at no point around here that there's ammunition anywhere around. There's no loaded magazines. There's no shells laying on the table. If you work on your gun in conjunction with ammunition on the same bench or in the same area, eventually a round is going to find its way into a gun. You're going to grab a mag to check your fit or something like that and rack a shell into the chamber. Ammunition goes in a separate area away from where you're working on it. So the first thing we do, check our chamber and make sure it's cleared, the magazine in the gun. And I'll turn it over to Bill Quigley here and he's going to take an AKT out of the gun and he's going to put another one in. He's going to put that same one in. Um, this is a, the AKT comes out just like a standard trigger. So Bill, if you want, you can pop that dust cover off sure. and we can, we can start what we're doing. Take the dust cover off. You want to take out the recoil spring by pushing front and sliding out. You can leave the bolt assembly in or you can take it out. It's up to you. I always left them in. Now, Bill, I'm, I'm going to interject myself here. You want it out? No, no, no. I want to just talk about one thing about the design of the AKT. With an AR-15, the hammer, okay, I'm going to simulate a bolt carrier here by this dust cover. Bolt carrier goes over the hammer, cocks the hammer back, stays in contact with the hammer the entire time on an AR-15. This does not happen on an AK-47. The bolt carrier cocks the hammer back and it comes, goes back over it and allows the hammer to rise up a little bit and then charges back across the hammer, pushing it down again. There's a bit of a design challenge here in order to get this trigger to function properly, okay, and smoothly come back. As you can see, it goes over, goes over the, the hammer again. Then it has to push it back down. This type of action takes a lot of work when you're making a trigger for it. So it's just one function of the, of the AKT that you'll notice. You're not going to have to do any extensive modifications to your gun like on some of the other triggers out there where you have to roll the nose over to keep this thing from hanging up back here. Okay, Bill, I'll turn it over to okay. you. Okay, I'm going to put my thumb on top of the hammer and decock it so it's up like that. And then I want to take remove the safety first. Pull your parts aside. Now, there's so many different shepherd's hooks or pin retainers in there too. You have to look what kind you have and see what steps you got to take to get it out. Some of them come out first, other ones come out after. You take a certain pins out. This one, it looks like you just grab it and pull it right out. So we'll just grab it with a little hook. So some of them you take the trigger out first? You got to push down on them to get a pin out to get the whole thing. Like this one slid in, was retained the hammer here, the trigger pin here, and the safety here. Other ones actually hook around the trigger pin, so it's hooked on the pin. So you're going to have to push it down, remove the hammer pin first, take the hammer out, and then slide it back off the trigger pin. This one I did not have to do it on. And you want to take anything you got, like a hook, I use a little Allen wrench all the time, and grab the spring legs and wrap them up around the sear edge. Now you'll notice that the hammer on the AKT has two sear ledges on it right here, okay? This is a single hook trigger, as they call it. This is the only hook that the sear actually rubs on right here. The reason we retain that is for this case right here, where you have to bring your sear leg, your spring legs up, in order to latch onto that hammer that makes it easy to install this. Some rifles take a double hook trigger, okay? This single hook will fit in a, dub, in a, in a gun that has a double hook trigger. A double hook is not needed. It's actually very difficult to make the two hooks identical in the sear height. And what you'll have is you'll have one rubbing more than the other. It's not needed. This single hook trigger right here does the job just fine. Okay. 
I'm going to remove the hammer by pushing this pin out. You got to turn them sideways a little bit to get them in and out. You can too with these guys. They act like a mousetrap sometimes. So if you want to put a wire tie around it or a rubber band to help hold it, you can. Otherwise, sometimes they do fly off at you. Take the trigger out next by pushing the pin through. And I drop the disconnect spring. Okay. Now what you'll notice is a lot of AK triggers have a type of sleeve where the disconnector can fit in here and not fall out. Okay? We did not use that. Again, coming back to the trigger profiles, in order to get rid of this looseness, you cannot have those sleeves in there. All right, it would have made this easier to install to have those sleeves in, but we did not do it in order to get that very sharp slope here and that sharp feel to the trigger. That's why everything's separate here. It has a precise fit. These holes are precisely fit from the disconnector to the trigger and the same with the hammer to the hammer pin. That's why it's all separate. Okay, Bill, now we can reverse the process to install it. Don't want to fit the safety, we're good because you did it. We're going to assume that okay. we fit the safety. Okay, so we're just going to reverse it then. You take your trigger, you actually have a little recess down inside there where the disconnector pin's going to hit, sit inside, I should say. So you take your disconnector. Might help to put a little dab of grease on the disconnector. Disconnect spring inside. And you lay it in there. Make sure your spring is seated. And notice that trigger did not need the roll pin. Fits in without it. Take your pin, a little grease. Notice the oil, it's purple. Purple is ALG's color. Line the pin up with the trigger hole and then push down on the disconnector slightly. Make sure the pin comes out the other side of the receiver. Like that. It's important not to force and to use wiggling motions of your finger in order to get these guys in. On the AK pin, very, not the same as the AK as the AR-15. Here you have your pin diameter, five millimeters, and you have a raised portion right here. So it's stepped. As you get to the final push, as you get this through this side, and this side is going in, you have to work this around to get these bosses to fit into the larger hole on the other side. And you're gonna take your hammer again. I'll quick show you this too. When you get it, you're gonna use your stock hammer spring that you get with it, an R hammer. You're gonna put the trunnion in there and you rotate it up and around. Make sure it goes on the right way here because that trigger bow has to be, that hammer bow has to be on the right side. Turn it sideways again, lower it down in there. Yep, here's your pin. Line the pin up. There we go. Shepherd's hook, make sure you put that back in. This one just gets wedged in, like I said, on the hammer pin. Now on some guns, Bill, you have to put the hammer in first, correct? Correct. If your safety's in, always a good idea to try to press on these pins, make sure they stay put. That way you know the shepherd's hook or your pin retainer plate is holding them properly. Release the springs. Now the springs, I should repeat that. You can see they got this little curved end on them up here. You wanna make sure this part is inside the trigger well. 
and this is front of the safety stop balls. the hammer safety does not go off good and what you do is you check your reset you want to put the spring in first otherwise yeah, you can jump up the, let's put the take some lubricant and you lube this the spots that are noted here on the instructions especially your sear a trigger likes to run wet in order to get the best feel out of it. And let's take that off. Let's just show them reset here. Okay. Okay. So what you do is pull your pull your trigger. Keep keep the trigger held back. Cock it. Goes forward. The hammer's got to be caught by the trigger. And you release it. Okay. That's the hammer catch it. That's the trigger catching the hammer right there. The hammer cannot go forward when you do that. So we'll just check it. Just a safety check. Hammer gets caught by the trigger. That's what you do. And make sure it's lubed up and you're good to go there. Place the dust cover. cover. There we go. Now the question comes is going to come up. Does this trigger fit my gun? I can tell you that we made it for stamped and milled AK 47s and AK 74s. It will not fit a Sega 12 gauge shotgun. We're gonna have a trigger for that coming out later this summer. I can't tell you if it fits this gun or that gun because there's so many variations of the AK-47 and so many variations of these guns, this trigger may need fitting in some of them. So I can't guarantee you that it will fit a certain one. All right. We always recommend installation by a gunsmith even though we've shown it here how easy it is to put in. It's something that we always recommend. Um, you're gonna, I don't want to pull this guy out of here. Let's flip these up. You're going to find that this trigger is a dynamite trigger for the AK-47. All right. It's 49 bucks. ALG is all about the square deal. It's the home of the square deal. For $49, you're going to get a trigger that's made out of triple alloy steel, properly hardened and tempered. Has all the geometry in there that you need in order to make this a wonderful speed shooting trigger, okay? And at the same time, you get the lightning bow right here, all right? Which will give you absolute trigger control. You can move your finger up and down on this in order to get your finger exactly where you want. It's a hybrid trigger right in between a curved and a flat trigger bow. And this is a wonderful addition to your AK-47 and AK-74. So thanks for watching. Um, just visit ALG Defense on the web, algdefense.com. Thank you.